Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Pearl River United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Jean Arlia Ellison, and it is a blessing and a privilege to welcome you to worship this morning. If you're new or visiting for the first time, we'd like to especially welcome you. Please feel free to see myself or one of the worship leaders and let me know how we can support you. Speak a little bit louder. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> well, friends, I, I'd like to just take a moment and thank everyone who helped out with VBS, who prayed for VBS, who donated for VBS, and who participated in VBS. So if you were part of that, I'd like to invite you to please stand and um, let's just give you a round of applause. And that uh, explains why our sanctuary looks a little bit different today. Uh, we are celebrating the theme, which was to Mars and beyond. And we had a wonderful time hosting. Uh, we had just about 60 children register for this. And it was an amazing week. I think uh, everyone who participated really enjoyed their time. And uh, we, you never know what uh, the uh, repercussions will be. There are, there are kids who may not have ever been in the sanctuary. There are kids who may not have heard if, that Christ is uh, who Christ is. So it was an incredible week and we had a great time doing it. Um, so I just wanted to raise your attention to that. Sarah? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, I am Sarah Pafford. I'm the lay uh, reader today. And uh, I think we might have some announcements. I'm not sure who, uh, David? There's no coffee hour. No coffee hour today. Sorry about that. Um, coming soon. <coughs> Maybe next week, yes. Helen? Um, good morning. Um, we're starting to collect for the white elephant sale next month. Uh, and if you put things down in the dugout room, just label them. So collecting for white elephant? Yes. And they're to bring them into the dugout room? Yes, right. And the proceeds go to the church budget and to the United Methodist budget. To the church and to the United Methodist women. Uh, women. Okay. Very good. And that is, um, I didn't see the date again, September? 20, 20th and 21st. 20th and 21st. Very good. Any other announcements? Okay. Moving right along and... Uh, Continuing to welcome, uh, we'll stand up and greet uh, peace to our neighbors. Thank you. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs>
you all rise and uh, call with me on the call to worship. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet God provides for the basic sustenance of life. May our hearts be open to trust you. Look at the birds of the air. They neither study nor plan nor plot their course, and yet God writes the instinct for migration into their hearts. May our our eyes be open to see you. Look at the birds of the air. They neither talk nor vote nor debate their responsibility, yet God weaves them into communities which nurture and defend. May our hands be open to serve you. And the opening prayer today. Loving God, we come to you in worship and thanksgiving. You are greater than we can understand. Open our eyes that we may see the wonderful truths you have shown to us in Jesus. Amen. And join me in singing the first hymn uh, in the red uh, Methodist hymnal, The Church is One Foundation, uh, number 545, and we will be singing verses 1, 2, and 5. children's time, but this morning in celebration of Vacation Bible School, we have an amazing Vacation Bible School slideshow for you. So um, I do want to take a moment to uh, lift up and call out Judy Detoma, who did an amazing job organizing Alice Tom, who put together this slideshow, our youth pastor, and she did so much of the work as well. Lindsay, who assisted uh, so many people, Camille, um, I can't, I've got a list of 30 names. So uh, it's just, it takes a whole community to make this work. And so we celebrate everyone as we lift this up. So please enjoy this slideshow. Children, if you're here and you remember the songs and you'd like to sing along and do the dances, you are welcome to come up and rock out or you can watch yourselves on the screen.
Summer. It's a great time of year, right? Sunshine, camping, concerts, ice cream. Summer was great, but fall can be just as fabulous and meaningful at the same time. More than the colorful trees, more than the pumpkin spice everything, more than even football. It's not just about going back to school or starting a new schedule. It's about turning over a new leaf, going new places, meeting new people, getting plugged into a place where you fit in and can make a difference. This fall, your family belongs here. Your kids belong here. Your grandparents belong here. Your friends belong here. You belong here.
Testament reading today is from Psalms 34, verses 17 to 22. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord rescues them from all. (coughs) He keeps all their bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. And the next reading is an uh, epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verses 4 to 15. For, the, for when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? When then, what then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord assigned to each, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. The one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose, and each will receive wages according to the labor of each. But we are are God's servants, working together. You are God's field. God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and somewhere else is building on it. Someone else. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid, and that foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold or silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work has been done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward, and if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. Today's gospel reading comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place before you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to it myself, so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. God's word for us today. Who is a fan of the beach? Yes. Favorite beaches? Call them out. I like Seven Presidents in Long Branch. That's one of my favorites. Grace Beach on Cape Cod. Cod. Diane would probably agree with you. Belmar. Belmar. 
wonderful. Ocean Grove. Ocean Grove. Long, Beach Island. Long Beach Island, beautiful. In our beach on Long yes, yes. Waikiki. Waikiki. <laughs> yes. Oh, Sandy Hook. <laughs> Seattle, yes, Seattle, absolutely. Bermuda. Bermuda, oh, with the pink sand. Beautiful, beautiful. Any other favorites? Kate May. Kate May, yes. I did a wedding there once, it was so pretty. So when I was little, I grew up in a small town near the ocean called Long Branch. And it's changed over the years, but its tourist appeal has only grown since I was little. Now when I was little, I didn't really think of it as a vacation town. We were there all year round, so that was just kind of what it was. It just got quieter in the winter. But regardless of whether it was 30 years ago or now, Long Branch was one of the best places to visit the beach. And I always loved to swim and look for shells and walk along the ocean. But of all the things that I loved, one of my favorites was building sandcastles with my family. Now, those of you who have tried your hand at sandcastle building know that it's both an art and a science. Now, they have now uh, these beautiful sandcastle uh, festivals where they build these huge, amazing pieces of art in sand. Um, occasionally you'll see them in Point Pleasant Beach or Ocean Grove and it, it just blows your mind how someone can actually sculpt with sand and make these amazing structures. But I was just an amateur. Nonetheless, no matter how pretty you want to make it on the outside, you must remember that a sandcastle must be built solid from the ground up. And whether you use pails and shovels, spare shells, or your own hands, one of the most important things that you need to do while building is to choose the right spot. If you build too close to the ocean, the tide could come in and easily wipe away your work in seconds. I've had that happen. If you build too close to the beach blankets, other children can very easily run through what you created and destroy it very, very quickly. Before you even start to create your sand masterpiece, you need to be sure that you have a solid foundation and a good spot, if you want it to last. See, good foundations are essential to good building. In today's scripture from Corinthians, Paul, in his role as church planter, reminds us that good foundations are also essential to church growth. Just a reminder, we know that Paul is the author of the first epistle to the Corinthians, and this epistle was written about A.D. 53 or 54. Paul founded the church in Corinth before moving to Ephesus, and Ephesus is a city on the west coast of Turkey, about 180 miles by sea from Corinth. So this kind of gives you an idea of what Paul's journey was. Paul returned to Ephesus on his third missionary journey and spent about three years there. It was while staying in Ephesus that he received news of the community in Corinth. And some of the things that he heard he wasn't too happy with. He heard about jealousies and rivalry and some immoral behavior. It also looks like that based on um, the letter to the Corinthians that uh, the congregation was requesting clarification on a number of different pieces like marriage, the consumption of meat, that was previously offered to idols. So again, this is a situation where this is an early Christian community and they're trying to figure out how to be a good Christian community. What do they have to leave behind from uh, pagan worship or the other ways that they used to worship or non-worship? And what do they have to take on in order to be a good Christian community? So Corinth was an important and wealthy city on the Isthmus, that's the narrow strip of land, separating Northern and Southern Greece. Paul spent 18 months there on his second missionary journey. So in this letter, Paul provides guidance for dealing with many of the divisions in the church. And I found some really interesting pieces about today's scripture. So first off, Paul makes a really important point as he explains his role and the role of Apollos in growing the Corinthian church. So he starts by correcting the misunderstanding that the Corinthian Christians have of their leaders. He says they focus their attention on Apollos and Paul as if Apollos and Paul were divine figures. So that's a big problem. Apollos and Paul not only failed to qualify as divine figures, their status was of servants, or in the Greek, 
diakonoi, and it just means mean workers who perform ordinary kingdom work. That's where we get our word deacon. Um, and basically, in the United Methodist Church, deacons connect the church with the world through service. So, Paul specifically notes that he planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the growth. So essentially, God's call to build the church in Corinth was started by one person, continued by another, and presumably continued long after Apollos' work was done. So Paul reminds us that although he and Apollos worked to build the church, God was behind each and every step of the process. So basically, Paul wasn't working to build Paul's church. Apollos wasn't working to build Apollos' church. Both of these servants were working together to build God's holy church. So that's an important distinction. Just like the early church, we have many servants in the local church working to make disciples in the name of Jesus Christ. Whether it's a pastor, Pastor Frank, Pastor Cindy, or myself, we're all working in conjunction with the people of the church to grow the church for Jesus. Paul notes that ego should not be a part of it, whether it's clergy or lay, though we have different gifts and talents for serving, God's the one that gives the growth. Not us, but God. I found this really striking. John Wesley, in his commentary on the New Testament, notes that the ministers are still surely instruments in God's hand and depend as entirely as ever on God's blessing to give the increase to their labors. Without this, they are nothing. With it, their part is so small that they hardly deserve to be mentioned. So Wesley's point is that we're all working together for the good of Jesus Christ. Another important piece of the scripture goes back to my discussion of sandcastles. According to the grace <clears throat> excuse me, God has given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. Someone else is building on it. Paul chose a solid foundation to build his church on. Jesus Christ was the architect, but Paul built the church and Apollos assisted. We have a very firm foundation here at Pearl River UMC. But what makes a good foundation? It's an interesting question. And I'm actually going to take us back to Vacation Bible School to talk about this. So during this week of VBS, we learned about several stories in scripture. We started at Daniel in the lion's den, and we came all the way through the New Testament to the walk to Emmaus. And we learned how to go beyond with faith, boldness, kindness, thankfulness, and hope. I think these are some of the great qualities that makes a very strong foundation for a church. And we have so many church leaders and parishioners with these gifts, kindness, faith, boldness, thankfulness, and hope. I cannot imagine a better foundation for a church. If the members of the early church had these gifts, they were indeed building a church on a strong foundation. Another important piece regarding the foundation. Paul makes it a point to remind the church that the foundation will be tested. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, etc., the work of each builder will become visible. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. So what's happening here? Paul invites the church to focus on their prayer, their theology, on Jesus Christ in order to secure a firm foundation. It was not enough to build a physically strong church. Its roots, its core, its foundation needed to be rooted in Jesus Christ. Paul notes that the work of the builders will be tested with fire. Or in other words, God's church will be tested. And testing is part of what makes faith strong and ensures that we stay focused on the Lord. So who wants to be tested anyway? I know that sounds like a kind of a, a silly thing. Why would God allow his church to be tested? Let's explore that with another question. Um, there's a show on TV, and I think it's fascinating. They compete to make um, 
different swords, and I, I believe it's like a, it's a blacksmithing show. Who knows anything about blacksmithing and the forge? Or it's it's very interesting. So, how do you make sure that a sword will withstand battle after battle? Well, you melt it down, and you hold it over fire, and you keep putting it in the fire until it solidifies and gets stronger and gets stronger. Because each time it goes through the fire, it gains another kind of level of strength. Each time it goes through the fire, it builds on what it had before, and it comes through that process being more able to withstand the next battle. So you wouldn't want to take uh, a sword right into battle after being through the forge one time. You want something that's been tested, that's been tried and true. This is one of the ways that God helps us get better. It's one of the ways that God invites us to grow and to deepen our faith. And sometimes this is an uncomfortable process, whether it's in our personal lives or in um, the church as a whole. But this testing, this challenge, these challenges that we meet, they're part of what our spiritual journey is. It's not other to our spiritual journey. This is going to happen. Regardless of what journey you're on, challenges are going to come up. Fire strengthens the sword. Challenges can help to make a church grow stronger. Challenges can help to make a church come together and to refocus on Christ. Challenges are not something to fear, but instead can be doors that lead to new reserves of strength and commitment. Now, I, I never want to talk about the recent tragedies that we've had and, and put some kind of a positive spin on them. They're tragedies, the recent shootings and the losses and all the different things that we've gone through together as a nation. But I, I did see some of the footage um, from some of the recent episodes and it was interesting how the communities have come together to donate blood, to bring supplies, to donate money, to help the families of the victims. So it goes back to that piece that um, I keep bringing this up because I love this quote that uh, when Mr. Rogers was a kid and would be very upset at seeing tragedies um, in the news or, or what have you, his mother said, look for the helpers. Look for the helpers. That's where you see God's grace. So people came together to be God's helpers. People came together to be the strength and to be community. The key to surviving these challenges is the same in the early church as it is for us today. We stand firm in the name of Jesus and we weather the storm. We withstand the fire and we come together. Friends, today's scripture reminds us to ground ourselves in Jesus Christ. Regardless of who planted, who watered, God is the one providing the growth. God is the one at the foundation of the church. Solid foundations allow for continued strong growth. Let us stand firm on our foundation. Let us also remember to not be afraid of the fire or the challenges that lie around us or ahead of us. Challenges were always present for God, <clears throat> God's church. But like the church in Corinth, we have the opportunity to become strong in faith and to become strong in Christ. Amen. Friends, at this time, I invite you, if you're able, to please rise for the next hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. That's number 629, verses 1 and 5. <laughs>
And uh, Naomi usually collects a prayer request, and she um, is healing from hip surgery. I had the opportunity to see her, and she was so grateful for your prayers. Um, so please just be praying for her healing. Uh, are there any other prayer requests? Oh, the sick and the shut-in. Anyone have any more prayer cards? Also, um, we received a prayer request from Rena and Bill. Uh, Beverly Wanamaker is having major surgery Wednesday, so let us pray, especially for her healing on Wednesday, um, that uh, God is with the doctors and nurses and all in her care, and that she may see significant progress and healing from this. Um, we also have a couple of other requests uh, Patricia, Rena's mom, was admitted to the hospital last night. I'm so sorry to hear that. So let us uh, surround Patricia with our healing prayers um, and let us surround the family that they may be filled with strength as they attend to her. Also, Bill's mom, Mary, is having minor surgery tomorrow. I'm sorry to hear that, Bill. There's a lot going on for you guys. So lifting up God's protection and prayers around each and every one of you, both the family and the ones going through uh, these surgeries and the <coughs> healing. And um, we as a community wrap our love and our warmth around you as uh, you all go through these uh, difficult times. Any other prayer requests that we'd like Pastor to leave? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry, just prayers for Martha and her family as she goes back to college on Thursday. Absolutely. Prayers from Martha and her family. And Martha did an amazing job at Vacation Bible School last week. We were really blessed to have her. So prayers for Martha surrounding her for her success in school and uh, for her entire family as it's difficult to send someone home to college. So um, let's surround them with love and... Did you say something? Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and continued prayers for David for healing. Any other prayer requests? Friends, let us pray. Praise to you, God, for long warm days, for buzzing bees and chirping crickets, for shade trees and gentle breezes. Praise to you for the Earth's rotation, for our cycle around the sun for sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Praise to you for the order of the universe, the variety of the seasons, and the gift of another summer. Lord, today we raise our prayers of joy and our prayers of concern. Today we especially lift up Beverly. Please, Lord, continue to surround her with healing, and Patricia as well, and Mary. Lord, we also lift up David, for healing and we lift up Teresa as well for continued healing. Lord, we also lift up Martha as she goes back to school, be with her and her family. And Lord, we lift up our church and its ministries, our active military veterans and their families, all first responders, the homeless and those who lost their jobs, our homebound members, including Charlotte. We, have, uh, we ask for prayers for strength, courage, and safety for Michael as he leaves for booth camp. We ask prayers for Myrna Richards and her family on the passing of her son-in-law. We lift up Peggy, Jim, Edeline, Lisa, Alice, Jack, Rose, Amy, Doris, Jim, Marilee, Tom, Kathy, Teresa, Margaret, Ed, Roger, Winnie, Ginny and her family, Kristen and McKee, Joan, Jerry, Charlotte, Alan, Carlene, Naomi, Johnny, Joanne, Larry, Michael, Cheryl, and Joan. And all those prayers known only to us as we come to you, Lord, with the boldness of the children of God as we share in the prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ushers, just hold on one moment. We have... Brothers and sisters, as many of you know, Pastor Jean has been caring for her father during his illness and caring for her children. The intense demands of caring for her family have become very difficult while serving Pearl River United Methodist Church full time. Pastor Jean has spent a great deal of time in prayer and contemplation to make a decision she felt would be right for our church, its ministries, and our family and her family. At this time, God has called her to care for her father and her family, and it is not possible for her to do this while serving our church. Pastor Jean has treasured her time serving as pastor of our church, being in ministry with a strong and supportive congregation. She has asked that we keep her and her family in our prayers always. The Pastor Parish Committee, along with Pastor Jean, have already met with our district superintendent, Reverend Gina Kim, to discuss how we can best move forward. The conference values and supports Pearl River United Methodist Church and will work with our church to find a pastor for Pearl River. We are blessed with lay servants in our church that work together to lead our church forward. Pastor Jean will be with us on September 1st to say goodbye and to let us say goodbye to her. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you, God always has our backs, and we will be okay. Thank you. Friends, please continue to keep my family uh, in prayer. And I'll say a few more words next week of goodbye. We'll save that for them. Thank you for your prayers. At this time, let us lift up our lives, our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings, and our ushers will wait upon you.
they may go to spread your church throughout the world and spread your love with all of God's people. Lord, we thank you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 While we're here, I also want to call your attention to all the wonderful school supplies donated over the last week. The, they will be going to People to People to be shared with local children in the community to help them go back to school with everything that they need. So um, if you have any more school supplies I think we're still collecting over the next week, you're welcome to continue bringing them into the church office. And every little bit helps. So please, please think about that. Our closing hymn is on Eagle's Wings, that's number 143, and we'll be repeating it once. 